everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have some exciting news to tell you. Uh, I decided to build a new uh, enclosed trailer for my off-road buggy. So uh, I'm going to be making a series of videos every week to show you what I'm, how I'm gonna go from beginning to start of this build. So the first uh, step of the build was basically to do the design and to find out the materials that I need and uh, and to pretty much design the whole trailer before I buy the components and and the steel. So uh, I'm gonna share with you uh, a little bit of uh, notes that I've taken uh, in regards to building this particular trailer, and I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on uh, how to build this trailer. So this is going to be a tow behind trailer. It's a um, attached to the back of the hitch of the truck. I'm gonna use my sliding camper in the front. Uh, so uh, basically the, the first thing that I did was to come up with some calculations in, in order to see um, where to position the rear axle. Uh, basically the, my, the, my current trailer is 16 uh, feet long and um, I wanted a trailer that is a little bit longer so I can have a little bit of storage in the front and I'm going to build some shelves uh, to put tools etc. And one of the challenges of finding a trailer that is suitable for my buggy is basically because I have rock wheel axles and my axles and tires are quite wide. So the outside tire width on, from both sides is uh, about 91 inches. And it's pretty hard finding a trailer, enclosed trailer that has a rear door opening um, that is 92 inches or even higher than that. And the other challenge is I needed to have uh, drive-in fenders, uh, so I needed to drive over the fenders um, to park my buggy in the trailer. And um, I also wanted it to be strong enough. Uh, I wanted the frame to be strong enough and I wanted the rear door to be strong enough to hold the weight of the buggy. And these are all challenges that are different from buying an enclosed trailer that is mostly used for cargo or lighter, lighter weight cars uh, or uh, uh, sleds uh, or smaller ATVs. I mean, my buggy weighs about 5,500 pounds, uh, plus all the tools and all the stuff that I want to put in the buggy. So the first uh, decision that I had to take was uh, basically what kind of axles I needed to have. And this was a no brainer for me. I decided to go with 7,000 pound axles. Uh, the, the price difference is not that much. And uh, I also, um, I already know what kind of tires I want to go with. I've I've always had Goodyear uh, Marathon and Endurance uh, trailer tires, and this is what I'm going to stick with. Um, the tires are going to be 235 80 R16s uh, on steel rims. I don't need anything uh, fancy. And these are load range E tires, um, meaning the total weight that I can carry on these the four tires is about 14,000 pounds, which is more than enough. Uh, I'm, as you might have noticed in all my videos that I show you before, I like to overbuild things a little bit, but I had to be very careful not to go overboard with weight. So I'm aiming to have a maximum load of weight of the trailer without the buggy of about 5,000 pounds, uh, including everything in the trailer minus the buggy. So when I put the buggy in, it will be about 6,000 uh, pounds more, I would say, with fuel, etc. So about 11,000 pounds, that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, in regards to the uh, the next decision that I had to take is is the main, main frame of the trailer, what I needed to use. Uh, I really like C-Channel. I've had good success in C-Channel before. I had already built a trailer back in 2005. And that's the trailer that I currently use, and uh, it had 5,200 pound axles and C5, so uh, five inch C channel. Uh, for this build, I was a little bit torn between the six inch and the seven inch C channel. And after I did the design and the calculations, I decided to go with uh, C7, uh, so seven inch C channel for the main beams as well as the front tongue. And I also decided to use a four inch. Um, C channel as cross members at 16 inch uh, centers. Um, I I did that for many reasons. I'll I'll share with you some of the uh, the thoughts that I went through for this design. Uh, so basically, after after knowing exactly what I want, uh, the main components, I started uh, doing some 
physics and math calculations in order to find out where I needed to position the axle. So this is this was very important to me because I wanted to have a space in the front. So <clears throat> the length of the trailer that I decided to do is approximately 20 feet. And um, because I wanted to use a four by eight uh, sheet, aluminum sheet uh, on, on, as, as a side panels for the trailer, I wanted to overlap the sheets by about two inches each one. So with the overlap of the uh, uh, aluminum sheets on the sides, it, I ended up with 19 feet, four inches uh, for the total length of the trailer. And uh, after that is done, I decided now to do the calculations to find out where to position the rear axles. Uh, so basically, <clears throat> uh, for these calculations, um, I'm not going to show you in detail how I did them. I might do a video later on to explain to you uh, how you can do uh, static equilibrium calculations to find out the tongue weight or the position of a trailer, uh, the uh, position of a buggy on a trailer or the position of an axle on a trailer. I'll show you the, quickly the calculations that I've done, but I'm not going to go into the details. So the first step is I ran the calculations for what I have done in the past and I did not know as much in the past and what I did in my previous trailer, I just followed the the 60%, 40% rule, meaning 60% of the trailer deck, 60% is in front of the center of the rear axles and 40% was behind. And that doesn't work all the time. Uh, you actually have to have some really more... Um, precise calculations in order to find out where exactly the center and how much I, I wanted it. So basically I, I, I ran a couple of different scenarios. Uh, some of these scenarios involve different kind of weights or different position of the of the, uh, the buggy on the trailer. So I wanted the buggy as far back as possible so I can have at least three or four feet in front of the buggy so I can have shelves on a small bench etc and maybe put a generator. Um, and that is why I needed to position the rear, the axle of the trailer, the center of uh, of the axles farther to the back of the trailer in order to have enough tongue weight at the front to get at least 10 to 12% tongue weight. So uh, I ran, up, I would say probably five, six different hand, uh, scenarios that I hand calculated. And I, I ended up with um, distance from the back of the bumper to the center of the uh, tandem axles to be between 82 inches to 87 inches. 87 inches is giving me 10% and 82 inches is giving me 12% uh, of weight on the tongue. So after I did that, I finally settled for uh, 86 inches. Okay, so uh, these are the uh, the load calculations that I had to go through. And uh, this is the uh, the best case uh, scenario when I had a 12 inch, 12% 12, 12 weight at the front tongue. I ended up with 80, uh, 83 inches approximately. Uh, this is from the distance from the back of the trailer bumper to the center of the axle. And so this is the front of the trailer here. So I ran another scenario where I had 10% uh, tongue weight and then I calculated uh, 87 inches position. And if I look at the uh, percentage of the deck uh, with 87 inches, I'm, I'm only getting about, um, so 37.6% uh, uh, behind the, tr the uh, center of the axles and 62% in front of the axles. So I decided then, uh, okay, should I go 83, 84? Uh, to try to compensate for the weight of the rear door. It's going to be a heavier rear door. And then I finally decided to to settle on 86 inches. Um, so I ran another couple of different calculation scenarios. Uh, see, what if I only have 300 pounds of weight in the front? What if I move the buggy four inches forward? What happens? And I'm, I was still getting between 10 and 12%. So I, I settled on, on 86 inches and that turned out to be the best scenario. Um, so this is the uh, design for the uh, base of the trailer. Uh, so the main beams are going to be C7s and these are going to be C4 uh, at 4.5 uh, pounds. So the C7 is 9.8 pounds per feet and the C4s, I chose the lightest weight C4 uh, at 4.5. I know this is a little bit overkill, but 
the weight difference between if I would have gone with the C6 and C3 is only 300 pounds. So the, the weight difference is, is not significant enough for me to, to worry about it that much. So um, this is the front of the trailer. Uh, once again, this is going to be a C7. Uh, the sides here are going to be C4. And uh, I decided to make two spaces in the, in the center, one for a spare tire and one for a water tank that I'm going to be using, uh, spare uh, fresh water tank. This is the position of the axles here. This is the uh, the 86 inches is from the back um, all the way to the center, uh, the center here of the uh, the axles. And I, I can get the calculations of everything. So the width, uh, the maximum allowable width in Canada and the United States for a trailer is 102 inches. Um, I decided to go with 96. I know this is crazy, but the main reason for going 96 is because I wanted to be able to put a one full sheet of aluminum on the floor and on the roof and not having any extras. And I could get, get away with that uh, just because, you know, I'm going to be driving over the fenders, right? So, uh, and I'm, I can make the rear door opening wide enough for my buggy to fit in. Uh, so the... Um, the distance between um, between the fender wells is going to be uh, 72 inches, which is too small for some people, but I don't care. I'm, bu I'm building this buggy for, for this trailer for my buggy exactly, not to haul race cars in it. So uh, anyways, so this is a side view of the, uh, of the trailer here. So uh, the walls uh, here, they don't have to be super strong. So I'm just using a two by ones. Um, um, one eighth thick and uh, three by ones as the uh on the on the front and in the back and as well as the main beam uh, three by one i'm going to be putting these at uh, 23 inches uh, center so uh this is all done here uh, this is the front of the trailer view with the dimensions and i also started designing the rear door so the rear door is going to be um, 94 inches uh, opening so i'm going to be able to drive the buggy no problem through a 94 inches uh, door it will leave me one and a half inches on each side so it should be okay um the interior height is going to be 92 inches from top for the interior so from the floor to the top uh, the uh, the walls are going to be made out of 50 tau aluminum sheet and the uh, the floor is going to be made out of 1 8 uh, tread aluminum plate i don't want to use any wood Okay, so I already got the axles uh, and the tires. So the axles, I custom ordered them. Uh, so these axles, I had to go to the manufacturer and I chose a um, center of springs to center of spring distance of 74 inches and hub to hub, hub face to hub face uh, distance uh, of 90 inches. And these are 7,000 pound axles with 916 studs. Um, so they should be strong enough for the uh the trailer that i'm building also got the uh the springs these are um seven thousand pound springs uh, prepare as well and they are slipper slipper springs uh, and i i got also the heavy duty um, tandem uh, axle kit okay so i gave you a little rundown of what i have done uh, so far uh, so the design is all complete uh for the trailer obviously there might be some changes later on as i as i start working on it i'm looking forward to starting this project and hopefully i will keep you updated and uh, of how things progress uh if you have any comments or you want to share with me uh, i mean i'm this is only the second trailer that i built so i try to do my research as much as i can but if you are more knowledgeable than me and you want to share some of your knowledge about building trailers etc please feel free to comment or uh, you know i will try to respond to your comments